Hey everybody, it's me, Zach. This is Potato, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and I'm back, back, back again. <laughs> I surely am. I don't know why I'm talking like that, but hi, hello. Good to see you all today. I hope you're doing well. We are back again for another Amberlynn Reed reaction vlog, and um, if you know, you're tired of Amberlynn, well, <laughs> join the club. But also, I do post usually once or twice a week about something not Amberlynn related. So if that's something you're interested in, just make sure to be on the lookout for those videos. Or come join me on Twitch as well, where we do not Amberlynn read content as well. You know, you feel me? You, you smell what I'm stepping in? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Now, after her Q&A yesterday, I was curious to see what we would be getting today, and the video she posted this morning is called Final Binge Diagnosis, Going Back on Medication, and I Might Be Suffering with PTSD. Bar. Vlog. And it really got me thinking about kind of like the things she said about her, her, her therapy in the last video. If you missed it, she talked a little bit about how she was going to keep going to therapy after the 12 required sessions for her weight loss surgery because in her mind, the real work comes after she gets the surgery and that's why she needs to keep going to therapy afterwards. And in general, I'm not going to discourage her from going to therapy at all because I think, you know, if you can find the right therapist and things like that, like, therapy can be a really positive thing for everybody. With that being said, I was just like, why are we not also talking about the importance of the therapy prior to the surgery too? Like, I don't know that there's any part of it that's going to be more or less work. Like, therapy is work. Therapy requires a lot of your own ambition, willpower, work, etc. to make it successful. And so, I don't know, that was just something I was thinking about because she did place a lot of emphasis on, like, the real work comes after surgery or whoever, whatever. And it's like, the real work is ongoing. The work is going to happen for the rest of your life. And I guess I'm just pointing that out because that's something, you know, when I first started going to therapy, I thought that, like, it was going to be just, like, some magic trick, pill, etc., and the moment I realized that, like, I was going to be working on my own anxiety and depression for probably the majority of my life from, from there on out, I was able to start making, like, real impactful change. And, like, this is really not even related to Amberlynn. It's just, like, I just want to share that with you all if you all have never tried therapy or you're worried about therapy. It's, like, knowing going into it that you will be giving time and work probably, likely, depending on like what your mental health issues and challenges are for the rest of your life. So I guess with that being said, you know, we're going to learn about what she's talking about with these different <laughs> diagnoses and things that she is has in her title that she may or may not be clickbaiting with. And I, I am hoping this is more than just like a Q&A and that this is like an actual vlog today since it has vlog in the title. But, um, you know, I think it's also just interesting because if you followed Amberlynn for any given amount of time, she's very much focused on diagnoses and things like that. And I think a diagnosis is so helpful because it does help us in understanding how to take care of ourselves and how to help ourselves with our mental health. But for me personally, just having followed Amber Lynn for a long time, she's always much more interested in getting the diagnosis to like explain her behaviors and excuse her behaviors than she is on working on coping with those diagnoses and like really managing them. And so that's what I'm curious about. It's like all good and well to have a diagnosis and whoever, whatever, but like, what are you doing with that diagnosis to better your life? So now that I've talked for like four-ish minutes and hopefully Poe has gotten comfortable and where he wants to be, let's just get to get to, shall we? Hello, Hi. welcome to a new vlog. So I am mid makeup. I have my second are, session today of- Are you mid makeup? Because this looks like your normal makeup. What do you mean mid makeup? What else do you got to add? You got the, the eyeliner, the brows. I'm confused. Therapy. 
Um, I woke up really emotional because of that, because I already know, like, therapy is emotional, especially when I go to therapy. I mean, I've never been in anyone else's therapy appointment, but I'm sure it's emotional for them as well. Wait, did she say, sorry, I was distracted by the makeup thing. Did she say this is her second appointment and she already knows she woke up emotional thinking about having to go to it? I'm just like, did you not just spend the past year going to therapy? I'm like... Why are we still, like, I definitely understand. I, you know, when, especially when I first started going to therapy, like, every session was emotional just because, like, I had a lot to work on that I hadn't been working on. And I think that can obviously also change from time to time, and maybe there's more emotional things that she needs to talk about. But I'm just like, what is going on over here in Amber Lynn Reed land? Um, just sharing my experience. Also, what is, Hi. wait, what is also this top? <laughs> what is this, what is the texture of this top? I'm kind of obsessed, but it looks also like a blanket. Time I talk about therapy, or it's my therapy day, like, Rarity is always back here like a little parrot. I just know that, like, my therapy appointments get very emotional and I cry a lot. I still do my makeup, because, I don't know, when you go to doctor's appointments or any sort of appoint, like, any sort of appointment, I just feel like you need to look you know, put together, like, you need to, I don't know, it's weird, I don't know. Okay, I don't know. work, I mean, honestly, relatable work, but I also just love that, like, you know, that that's something she prioritizes, but she also gets on YouTube all the time, not looking put together, and so I'm just like, what's the difference, bestie, why, <laughs> why do you care? I'm also wearing my little, your hey, little, your my little, little earrings, that is a side braid, oh my god, can you guys see those, look, Oh, wow. Because I'm wearing a side braid today. Wow. See what I did there? <laughs> Fa a fashionista. Okay, come on, Vogue. Who is she? <laughs> so I'm going to finish doing my makeup. Um, I'm about to do my mascara, which is going to change my whole look. Is it? Mascara. I swear, if there's Let's one see. item of just, makeup that I would keep just put it, it would be mascara. Just put it on. Foundation. I want to see. I want to see. Actually, there was that one time she did put on some mascara, and she only did it on one eye, and I could tell the difference. But also, like, this very much lo looks like just her normal makeup look right now, so I'm not sure if I'm really going to see a difference, so just show me. But probably mascara. Or both. <laughs> Oh, uh, we don't get to see her put on the oh, mascara. On. So it has been a few... Okay, I can see some some eyelashes. Definitely that does help her eyelashes. I, I need to remember this. Hours since you guys last saw me. I did have some really cute lipstick on. This lipstick literally has like a cat. <laughs> That's so um, cute. But I just finished my second therapy and I really want to make it a priority unless I forget or I'm busy or something. So, to so it was her second appointment. She, she's had, literally in the last video we watched, she talked about how, like, all this, like, emotional work she's done. I'm like, so we're, we're going to our second appointment today, <laughs> and you've done so much emotional work. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm on the same page as Amber Lynn. Like, talk about it real quick, right after it happens. Um, it is online, like, through telehealth. Sure. Um, it's because that's the only way that he actually does it, so... It's not because I, like, chose that. It's just because that's how he does it, which is totally fine. I personally love this therapist. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so intrigued because I feel like the first time that she talked about it, she didn't present it that way. She presented it like, well, that's just how everybody does it now. That's how everybody does it in a post-pandemic world. And I remember her saying that because I was like, well, yeah, it's, it's definitely much more accessible, and I think that's, like, perfectly fine that you're doing that. But also, like a lot of places if you want because she also chose like who she wanted to go to like she got a list of recommendations and she made a choice to go to this person and if she really wanted an in-person I'm sure she could have found somebody that was doing it in person but as long as she likes it that's great it's very hard to find a therapist that like you jive well with and and that works for you um so this appointment actually we talked a lot about do I have binge eating? What's really my food problems? Uh, and what can we do to help with that? So I don't. I do not binge. Um, <laughs> therapist said so. I say so. I have had issues, and I was very vocalized with this, about this. Very I'm, honest about this. In 2019, I had binge eating problems. 
I'm <laughs> so sick of this conversation. I'm so sick of this conversation because of what I literally said before this this conversation even started, right? Before I even started reacting to this video, is that she's so hyper focused on like the diagnosis of what is going on with her and like what what she will call herself or identify with or whoever, whatever, and she's so less focused on like actually doing the work to correct those issues and this is why it's just also like yeah you one you just said you you just contradicted yourself within <laughs> the span of like all of like the two minutes that you've been talking about it where you're like we both agree that I I don't have these issues I've never had these issues and then Moments later, well, in 2019, I definitely had binge issues, which I think is around the time that she said that she got diagnosed with the binge eating disorder anyways. So I'm just like, also, what were you doing at that time to work through that those binging problems? Probably nothing. The same way that I'm like, now that you're getting all of these, like, diagnoses and things like that, like, what are we going to do to work on them? <sighs> it's like she's... She's honestly, this is like, I think a little bit of a, of a trend that I feel like is happening on the internet where we get like tied up into the diagnosis. And like I said, I do think those things are important, right? Like it is helpful for me to know that I have generalized anxiety disorder and major depression because knowing those things informs how I talk to my therapist and how I individually work on bettering myself and my mental health and my day to day life. I think diagnoses are helpful, but sometimes we get so stuck into, <laughs> like, what our diagnosis is and don't put in the work to, like, figure out what that means for managing our lives. Like, it's not, not, having a diagnosis is not a bad thing. I don't want that to be the interpretation. But, like, for me, personally, okay, and that's, like, anytime I'm talking about mental health, I'm talking about my own personal experience, right? I don't want to put this on anybody else. But for me, personally, the most important thing that has ever come from a mental health diagnosis has been working through what that means for how I navigate life. You know, like, I'm always going to have generalized anxiety disorder, and I'll probably always also have major depression. And so because of that, knowing those things, I can move forward in life in a different way. Sorry, I don't want to be too preachy, ranty, etc., but it just... <sighs> We've spent more time on Amber Lynn's channel going back and forth in the past few months about if she does or doesn't have binge eating disorder than we have spent on, like, talking about what she's doing to overcome those things, you know? I don't eat that way anymore. I don't have that same mind frame around food anymore. Um, but I think this topic is just like, safer off of my channel because I know oh, definitely. a lot of people have different thoughts about it. Definitely. It's just safer if I don't talk about it. But I'm definitely. Not um, I do not have binge eating disorder. Definitely, because here's my other thing, okay? You you said you, in 2019 you binged, but we also know that until like this past year or two, you weren't consistently seeing a therapist. So how did you just magically overcome a binge eating disorder in 2019? I would like to have a better understanding of that, too. But I also 100% agree I would keep all of this stuff off the internet. I would keep all of it off of YouTube. And yet here you are talking about it on YouTube and also using it as clickbait in your title. And obviously it's taken some time to realize that because with someone my size, I mean, I, I overeat, obviously. I mean, you don't become this size by just, like, kind of overeating, you know, <laughs> It's not how it works. Anyways, sure. so we talked um, about, like, why am I this size? What is my issues with food? How do I have a better relationship What is my issue? I love her use of, of is. What is my issues with food? And it's, 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 I, I turn to food for comfort. It's that simple. Um, if I'm feeling any sort of negative emotion, I want to eat. Because okay. while I'm eating, I do not feel those negative emotions at all. So... I love this therapist because something I've never had before was um, someone explaining to me, like, the most popular emotions, popular, that's for the lack of a better uh, term. Is that water running in the background? It probably is not going to pick up for, for y'all to hear. There's definitely, I don't know if wifey's in the shower doing dishes or something, 
But I, I'm, woo, the focus, the focus, if there's anything to distract my brain. The most used emotions that humans feel um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And where do we feel them in our body? Like, where's our physical symptoms of them? What is our emotional symptoms okay. of them, et cetera, et cetera. So they want me to journal, which I love doing, journal <laughs> down, jot down times where <gasps> right before a moment. We, we love the journaling. Any any excuse for Amberlynn to, to lean into her journaling identity. I want to turn to food for comfort. Exactly what am I feeling? What are the emotions? Where do I feel them in my body? Oh, how do I feel them mentally? Uh -huh. um, what is the scenario? Why am I also feeling these ways? You're sure. And I think it's going to help me a lot. Um, this was a very educational um, therapy session, and I absolutely loved it. Like, I was dreading therapy at first, and I was even super honest with him. I was like, I was dreading therapy. And is, is that what she was doing, though? <laughs> like, I'm just... I'm just like rewinding in my mind and maybe I'll have to go fact check this for myself but like in my mind I feel like she has only ever presented herself about this particular therapist of being excited and talking about how it was going to be a good thing for her and she was thrilled and excited and this is just why I'm like I can't I mean maybe that's my my own memory maybe I'm thinking of some other therapy situation but I also don't understand why you'd be dreading therapy because you just had that experience with the other therapist that believed in health at every size that you said was great I don't understand why you would be dreading it but I also really don't remember you sharing that I'm gonna go and try to find like the first time that she talked about going to this new therapist because I could have swore in my head and my memory that she was excited or, or at least at the very least not dreading it they want me to do 12 sessions with a therapist. I can do two sessions a week. I can do one session every two weeks. So obviously the quicker I do it, um, the better, but it's not just up to, up to me, you know? Um, yeah, I actually officially have a new psychologist and I'm really excited. But now that I've been to only two sessions, I, I think I'm looking forward to the third because before this session, I, you guys did not see this, but oh. I had massive anxiety. It wasn't about therapy uh, as a whole, uh -huh. partially, but it was just about everything. Everything felt scary. Um, I have been suffering so bad, and I, I need to go back on medicine. That is why I scheduled um, a psychiatrist appointment. Okay. Because I, the medicine I was taking... I guess I didn't realize also that she went off of like her mental health anxiety whatever medicine i don't remember what she's taking but i do remember she took it i guess i didn't realize she stopped taking it it just wasn't working anymore so um i was told to stop taking it so i did stop taking it and now my anxiety is it's just it's it's not good obviously so okay. i'm going to be put back on medicine i am going to feel so relieved when that happens um but my appointment's not for another like two weeks okay work as soonest i could be seen which is fine so until then i'm really going to take advantage of these next few um Let's therapy go. sessions just to understand my emotions more and why do i feel the need to turn to food to comfort those emotions and sure you know, I, I feel really good and we want to talk more about like ptsd um, because of the things that I've been through in the past, like my childhood, uh -huh. I have been told by almost every single therapist I've had that I show a lot of signs of PTSD. That's a topic that never, uh, never is easy. I, I don't even like talking about it now. It gives me like a lot of like unwanted feelings, but that is, um, that appointment I went. That's, yeah, that's, that, that's, again, my thing is, like, if you've had all of these, and listen, I, it, working on anything related to your mental health is never easy, but I'm just, like, if you are here saying, like, every therapist I've ever talked to has suggested I have PTSD, okay, well, then what are we doing to work on it? Which, like, hopefully, it sounds like maybe this new therapist is going to help her out with that, and I will just cross my fingers that they do. And obviously, you are going to continue working on that forever, so maybe she has done some work on that. But, like, I, again, for me, it's just, like, every time she comes on to talk about mental health, that's, like, a, a, her collection of diagnoses as opposed to, like, here's what I'm doing to work. So, 
It sounds like maybe we're making some progress with this therapist. If we are, I love that for her. I, that's what I want for everybody when it comes to mental health. I care so much about people's like mental health and like working on it. I feel like it's not something folks do enough or talk about enough. Like we always talk about getting annual checkups from a doctor, but very rarely are people encouraging anybody, even if you don't have a mental health diagnosis, like it is so helpful to regularly see a therapist to talk through your problems and things like that. Really well. Of course, it's hard. It's not a walk in the park, but sure. it's going to be worth it in the end. Work. So, All right, wait, are we getting some vlog content now? That we're getting, we're at least, maybe it looks like we're in the kitchen. More than just like sitting somewhere and talking at the camera, please, please, I will take you washing the dishes. Show me you cleaning a dish. Eve is currently cooking dinner, so if you hear- Oh, that was that noise. That's what's happening. <laughs> Why did her saying sizzling manizzling feel motivated? <laughs> Why did that feel? like coated and something uh, that I don't know do y'all agree or disagree that felt a little weird <laughs> we're doing like an Easter moment okay oh come on we're, Easter we'll find each other some stuff he is fucking like, risen like adult Easter basket without the basket an adult Easter basket does that mean that there's more pickle bread was there a dildo did did wifey <laughs> is that what makes it an adult Easter basket? Wifey wifey slipped a little dildo in there. <laughs> the number of times I've now talked about adult toys after she had this whole moment on her channel where somebody sent her one has been too damn high. I really gotta stop. I just walked out for my appointment and look. Look, look at the goodies! Oh my god. Baby. Fucking Legos. <gasps> Fuck, are those? Oh no, those are strawberries. I thought those were carrot socks and I was gonna rage. Oh my gosh, you got me some cute socks. I guess, Wait yeah. A I'm gonna look at all this and then I'll show you guys this is, what she got me and what I this got. This is her. the utmost. Okay, so I opened everything <laughs> I have to show you because it's just so sweet of her. She got me this calligraphy pen set, which this is what was in it. It's wow. a book that you can obviously write in. And then Obviously. it comes with the pens and the ink. Like, this is so cool. And then these socks. We have uh -huh. avocado. We have peach. We have watermelon. We have banana. We have uh -huh. lemon and strawberry. So cute. And then look at these bookmarkers. These are bookmarkers. Wow. Like, if that ain't cute, I don't know what it is. I mean. I've been really wanting one of these thingies. A fidget spinner? What is this? 2010? <laughs> like, what? I suffer with excoriation, you guys know, and I really want to keep my fingers busy. Okay, work. And I, I mean, I'm sure wifey could find some ways to help you keep your fingers busy. What do you know about keeping your fingers busy? What do you know? I'm, listen, oh, that was truly awful, awful. Please just play with your fidget spinner. She got me one. <laughs> I guess I'm so sweet. Oh my God, I feel so emotional, God. I feel so emotional, baby. Like, oh my god, I had to open one instantly. Look, look how... Ugh. Wow. <laughs> I'm out of that out. Like, look how cute. Yeah. It's like cute, funny, and silly. Like, you can't be stressed squeezing on yeah. one of those. Like, True. Sure, sure, and sure, sure. And then she sure. got me this phone charger where it's, like, portable. Now, in what world do you need a portable phone charger? Where, where have we seen you go that you need to take a, a charger on the go with you so that you can charge from wherever, whoever, whenever? I'd like to see you take that portable phone charger out into the world. That's some content I would like to see. Would like to request that. I think that is so cool. So I'm excited to give that a try. She really loves Bomb her for Easter. I'm obsessed with Legos. And it's funny because I almost got her this. <laughs> I was very close, so we both would have wow. gotten it. And I've been hounding her. I don't want a fish. I don't know why. So obviously I can't get a fish. So why uh, can't wait? Why why is it obvious that you can't get a fish? Why couldn't you get a fish? What's what's stopping you? I mean, not to say that Amberlynn needs any more pets, but what's stopping you? It's like fake fish tank. When I hook it up and stuff, I will definitely show you guys. I'm so excited. Please. I have three cute little fish. Please. Last but not least, these Damn. gorgeous flowers. They're absolutely stunning. Thank you so much. Listen, baby. 
I'm not gonna rain on anybody's parade for gift giving or whoever, whatever. Like, for, for me and my loving, adoring partner, we give gifts for, like, birthdays, our anniversary, and then Christmas, even though neither of us are super religious. It's just, like, be because of the tradition of growing up celebrating Christmas, like, we tend to celebrate that. I don't understand, personally, as somebody who also, well, I guess Amber Lynn is agnostic, I think, uh, but, you know, as an atheist, <laughs> I don't, I don't understand celebrating things outside of Christmas, but maybe, maybe also this is a, a family tradition, or, like, she's just accustomed to it. I get more of the vibes that they just love buying shit for each other, which is also fine. Gift giving is lovely. We've had this whole conversation before on, on the <laughs> on the YouTubies, and and people got mad that I was like gift shaming her or whatever. I don't know. I, it just like for me, I'm like, oh my god, this seems like a lot. Like, get me a chocolate bunny and let's call it a day, besties. And there weren't even dildos. Th there was the fidget spinner though. We are keeping our hands busy. <laughs> I love you. I love you so oh, baby. Now I'm going to show you stuff. So these are the things I got her. I got her a bonsai tree group oh, kit. Oh, okay. I'm loving the voiceover. She does like Legos. I got her into them. Ooh, come on, architecture. She strange planet, like Instagram. So I got her the book. Okay. She needed a new perfume. So I got her guest. Damn, this is a lot. Shit. Hats, so I got her one of I those. I like that hat. With a little ghost. That, that's a hat I would wear. Although I haven't worn hats in a long time, mostly because I'm, like, growing my hair out and things like that. Uh, and I'm just, like, looking over at my collection of hats that I haven't worn in a long time. But I need to get back into the hat game. Um, she loves face masks, skincare, et cetera, et cetera. So I got her a ton of those. And she does love socks. So... I got her some of Y'all got a sock really fetish or what? Y'all have so many damn socks at this point. And what she loves. So I got her some coconut milk um, scrub and some brown sugar scrub. And last but not least, she loves, like, the balloon dog, which so do I. It's super cute. So uh, sure. I found that on Amazon. Wow. So, yeah, I hope she likes everything. Actually, I already... When you're good to mama, mama's good to you. Ma Sugar Mama Amber Lynn coming through with the gifts. Very nice. You know, because I'm editing. She loved everything. <laughs> All right, come out here. <laughs> I wish you guys could see her face. I'm, I'm kind of mad, though, that the vlog part of this so far has been just her her gift giving and showing her gifts and that she got and that she gave and everything like that. I'm hoping we get something more for this vlog. You like? Oh, baby, I love it. You baby. I did. Oh, look at them. Okay, wifey, look at them arms. Okay, wifey, look at these arms. These arms are kind of nice. I'm not going to lie. She's got some nice arms. So obsessed. Baby. Baby. I don't know how that smells. Baby. I'm going to try it out. Baby. Ooh, this is aesthetic. Not the aesthetic. <laughs> I, I hate that word to describe just things in general. I don't, I, just because I don't feel like it's descript, like, what does that mean to you? Not that things can't be aesthetically pleasing, which I think is maybe what they're trying to say is like, oh, this is my aesthetic. I enjoy this aesthetic. But I would just like some more descriptors to help me understand what you like about it. Been needing some new cologne. Tell me if it smells good. Ooh, Let's see. Ooh. I just came. Okay. <laughs> you just. <laughs> I'm sorry. You what? <laughs> I'm sorry. You what? I'm sorry. Who? Do we need to send in the, the cleanup crew? You what? Because of some some fragrance. That smells bomb. Bomb. Guess seductive. Who is it? Seductive, Amberlynn? So we're kind of in a rush. You love everything though, baby? Baby, I'm obsessed. Baby. <laughs> oh, she really is coming. I did. You know what? I love my son. Were we on the same page as socks? We were on the same page yeah, Did socks. you hear that noise she made? I believe her when she said that she came. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She is, she is feeling it. 
I literally have almost bought this hat so many times. Really? Really? There's so many different colors here. Going I just party. love how they sound when they talk to each other because even Amber Lynn sounds different when she's engaging and like the lovey dovey voice with wifey. It, it is a different voice, a different vibe. It was for me to choose a color. No, this is perfect. Good. I don't have any gray. I'm glad you like. Oh. You know, we were just talking about this baby. Yes, we were. You a bonsai grow kit. A bonsai tree. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to put this together as soon as I'm done. I'm obsessed. I'm so the obsessed. Scheme, first full, chef's I know scheme. the color scheme like all goes together besides the the book, but yes. And wow. I didn't even do the color scheme on purpose. It just like happened. You're just an aesthetic type of gal. I am. <laughs> Look at this guy. Because I know this, you like the balloon dog. This is... He's going on my desk. If you... <laughs> I figured. <laughs> I, I also have so many questions of, like, if you have to explain this much about, like, oh, by the way, I got this because I know you like the balloon dog. Yeah, she can probably figure that out if she really likes the balloon dog. <laughs> like, why do you have to explain it to her? Why you got her things? <laughs> Hello, hello. Hi. So it's the end of the night. Um, yeah. uh, so that really was the only vlog part of this. Otherwise, it's all just her sitting and talking. Because you know this is going to be P.O. Box and or the the voice memo part of the video. So that that's that. That's that on that. I'm just like, I'm going to spend some time together. Um, I do want to end this video. Please. I know it was a lackluster. <laughs> they just consisted just of... The, just this one? Just this one was lackluster? The, just this one. Not the, the past two, three weeks worth of videos? Massive therapy and just, like, really focusing in on emotions. <laughs> I really need to do that, so... Um, that's how I spent my day, but I do want to do P.O. Box. Let's what go. I mean by that's how I spent my day is because I journaled, like, quite a few of my emotions today. And, okay. Like, why I was feeling that. Great. And just answering all the questions that my therapist told me to do. So, anyways, let's do P.O. Love, Box. So love this Box. inner healing and working on your mentals. Love that. Uh, I'm being sincere, in case that's not coming across. I'm... So first thing, we have this package. So we have a little bag. Oh, uh -huh. for some reason I thought it was a bag in here. What is this? Ooh. A note. So let me read that. So this is actually from someone's business called the LM Collection. Um, okay. I don't know if they want me to share the reason why they have this collection because it is personal, but I will say an amazing cause and thank you so much kiana for if it's, um opening up to me wait if it's part of their if it's part of their business model i'm sure they do want to share that like i'm sure everything if a business is sending you any kind of thing it's because they want they want the business that could come from you opening it up on your channel so yeah i would think they would want you to share but listen i don't know let's see let's see whatever this is This is stunning. This dainty gold heart. Ooh, this is like right dainty. up my alley. Oh my Just, god, this is it's, beautiful. It's perfect for our dainty girl. It's right up her alley, yes. The LM Collection. Please, you guys, check out this website. Thank you so much, Kiana. Here we have another package. All right, let's Ooh, go. So we have Let's fucking book. go. House of Leaves by Mark. I don't want to pronounce this wrong. Uh, Mark... Z Daniel List. <laughs> she, she said, I don't want to pronounce this name wrong, and then proceeds to just pronounce it wrong, anyways. Love that. Daniel List. Uh, no. So if you guys want to send me anything, oh, perfect. Is my PO box. Don't forget, she needs your content. She needs your, your gifts sent to her PO box so she can produce content on her channel. Box, I appreciate everything. You guys are honestly amazing. Okay, next is... Interviews! Where I am being interviewed by you. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Okay, so let's see who are the lucky interviewers today. Yeah, let's find out. Hey, Amber. So we're going to ask another question. It's Margaret again. Hi, Sarah. I'm Amber. <laughs> and we wanted to know, we 
Um, what is your favorite movie of all time? Okay, love you. Bye. Y'all, could y'all, could y'all please ask some juicy ass questions? I mean, you know my ass is not here on the voice memos, but you have all the time in the world, and by all the time, I mean 30 seconds, and you want to know what her favorite movie of all time is just for her to answer some fucking, uh, what's her name? What is her name? Girl from, Serena from Gossip Girl. Why can I not think? Blake Lively. You know she's gonna give some Blake Lively ass movie answer. You know she is. You know she is. Why are we asking these dumb ass, repetitive ass questions? Hi, you guys. My favorite movie of all time. Um, I used to say Forrest Gump. That used to be a big one for me. But I'm going to go with A Simple Favor. Is that, is that not a, is a simple favor? Let me look it up. I've never watched that movie, but I'm almost positive it's a fucking Blake Lively movie. A Simple a simple Favor. Yeah, it, it stars Anna Kendrick, Blake Lively, Henry... Oh, Henry Golding. Oh, Andrew Rannells. Oh, maybe I should watch this. Those, both, I think both of those men are just cuties. Uh, but yeah, it's a fucking Blake Lively movie. I told y'all. I told y'all wasting your 30 seconds to ask what's your favorite movie of all time. Get out of here. Hello, Amber. Did you go to Comic-Con this year? Love you. What? Now, why would you think Amber Lynn Reed went to Comic-Con this year? I'm telling y'all, I'm going to fucking throw something because y'all are asking the lamest ass questions. Get it together. Ask a better question. I swear to gosh. I swear the fuck to gosh, use your 30 seconds better than that. No, I did not. But thank you so much for the question. I think the question everybody wants to know is, what happened to the bench monster? Oh, okay, bestie, let's go in. At least, at least, at least you're asking a juicy question. Thank you. I mean, I don't think she's going to answer this honestly. I don't think she is, but... <laughs> But thank you, Miss Ma'am, for asking anything that's not just like a throwaway stupid question. Yikes on bakes. I am ruined. You're you're gonna say nothing? You're gonna say you're gonna say nothing as though the binge monster wasn't a fucking side character to your channel for years? As though we didn't reference, and by we, I mean you didn't reference the binge monster every two seconds on your channel for at least a couple years. Get out of here. Get out of here. <sighs> how did how did the voice memo section of this get me so worked up? <laughs> I need to chill. I need to chill. I was just wondering if you have like a weird habit or quirk that you can only act out when you're by yourself not even in front of Feline or your family or anybody that you can only do when you're by yourself probably something to do with that pickle bread because i know i have my quirks so yeah i was just wondering that love you. i don't understand this question Aww, i love you thank you for the question oh my gosh it's so hard because the majority of like my weird little habits and my quirks. Um, she is a quirky queen, girl. Sees them and I present them in front of her. Um, oh gosh, let me think. I legit cannot think of anything. Okay. Because um, it's like you ask me like something I do by myself, like not in front of Feline. And I'm pretty like myself in front of her, so I don't even have an answer. Oh my god, I feel like that's such a bad answer. Wow, I'm sorry. I, but anyways, I, I hope that you. I learned so much from the Q and A portion of that video today. It was so helpful. I'm so glad you're connecting with your supporters in such a meaningful way, Amberlynn. Wow, I really learned a lot about you. If you guys enjoyed this video. I still feel bad that I can't think of a quirky uh, thing that I do. It's gonna be fine. I'm alone. Let's you know, just... I feel like I want to ask Feline to answer uh, one day, like, some of the weird things that I do, or, like, the weird habits that I do, or, like, quirky things just that I do that on. she's seen me do, because it's like, I've always been myself. Just move like, on. What is quirky? Let's move what on. What is weird? Let's like, move on. You know, so... Wrap it I know up. that she has actively <laughs> been honest, where she's like, that's weird. That's a quirky thing. Um, so I feel like I want to like I have her answer that um, in a future video because I don't know. Okay, what wrap it up. Think? Wrap it up. So, anyways, I hope that you guys enjoy this video, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Bye. That was extra. Mm -hmm. Bestie, that's not how I wanted to end that video. <laughs> that's not how I wanted to end that video. Chill out. <laughs> Chill out.
Anyways, uh, you know, here's what I will say. There wasn't as much negativity in this video. Outside of, like, maybe the, the girly asking about the binge monster, but I think also that's just a fair question. Like, we suddenly don't want to talk about the binge monster because you were allegedly cured of your binging in 2019 or whatever. But <laughs> anyways, I do think she focused more on positivity in this video, so I can appreciate that. I'll give it to you. You can have it for this video. Outside of that, I don't have anything else to say, so I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Make sure to subscribe down below and hit the bell button so you get a notification every single time I post a new video. Feel free to leave me a comment, hit like, click share, and follow me on all my social media, including Twitch, including getting a cameo, including checking out my merch shop, including, I don't know, whatever. Whatever I'm doing on the internet, you better be a part of it. And above all else, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!